Je vais vous parler de droit de la biodiversité. I am going to talk to you about uh, the law of biodiversity and traditional knowledge associated with the conservation of biodiversity. This work brings together two notions, the tangible heritage, the heritage of nature and biodiversity, and the intangible heritage, i.e. traditional knowledge regarding nature of indigenous and local populations, knowledge which is useful for the conservation of biodiversity. First of all, we're going to talk about heritage. There is heritage when there is an interest for future generations. In international law, the first time people started talking about nature as being a heritage was during the Stockholm Declaration in 1972, and it was adopted in several documents. So one is mentioned here, the Bern uh, Convention, mentioning uh, fauna and flora as a scientific, cultural, recreational, economic, and what is most important, intrinsic, heritage that must be preserved and forwarded to future generations. The notion of heritage implies a notion of transmission and also responsibility. States, which are sovereign, are therefore the trustees of nature and uh, they are in charge of managing the uh, common heritage for, hum for mankind. Around this notion, a, uh, an international legal framework developed, acknowledging the importance uh, of uh, environmental protection, also allowing to develop uh, international rules and laws in the field of environment, the main fields of environment, and more recently, it also acknowledged the importance of uh, traditional knowledge regarding environmental protection. This was made possible because the role of uh, civil society players was acknowledged and local and indigenous communities are acknowledged players in the international civil society. The Convention on Biological Diversity is the most ambitious document in order to preserve the natural heritage in general. It is based on three main principles, preservation of biological diversity, sustainable use of its elements, these are really heritage-connected notions, and also another notion of fairness and equitable distribution, division of the advantages derived from the exploitation and use of genetic resources. Now, in this case, the objective is to allow Southern Hemisphere countries which very often uh, have natural wealth and a large variety of genetic resources to get a share of the benefits, a share of the profit coming from the exploitation of the natural resources they own. Article 8, comma J of the Convention is uh, very interesting. The objective here is to acknowledge and uh, leverage traditional knowledge held by uh, indigenous populations, which means that anthropology, ethnology and law are involved as disciplines. The Convention on Biological Diversity acknowledges that a large number of uh, local and indigenous populations depend traditionally from uh, biological resources. Their traditions are based on those resources and it is therefore absolutely essential that the benefits deriving from the use of those resources are shared evenly especially when this knowledge uh, has to do with the preservation and the sustainable use of those elements. So we need to acknowledge the importance of the knowledge held by these indigenous populations in the preservation of biological diversity. I am not going to provide a definition of uh, local and indigenous uh, communities. The, uh, there is a discussion in progress um, 
regarding this definition. Village and local definition, uh, po populations and communities are not well defined in the uh, document. However, the knowledge we're referring to is practical knowledge characterizing traditional ways of life relevant for the conservation and the sustainable use of biological diversity. The Nagoya Protocol 2010 is a kind of uh, application decree of the Convention on Biological Diversity. The, field of the scope of application are the genetic resources as a whole and the traditional knowledge associated with the genetic resources uh, which uh, fall under the competence of the uh, Convention and also all the benefits and profit coming from the use of this knowledge the advantages derived from the use of this knowledge. The idea would be to get from the communities uh, providing the resources a previously granted consent, and this should be an informed consent when the supplier, the community, knows what the user is going to do with the data or the resource. Therefore, it would be possible to uh, plan a better sharing of the advantages, be it in the form of a technology transfer, for instance, or any other form following the use of both the resources and the knowledge. Obviously, this uh, means that we uh, start talking about intellectual property and this is something very difficult to implement regarding the uh, traditional knowledge held by indigenous populations.